Welcome back to Triathlon Sushi. Today I'm going to talk about doing an Ironman in two months. To be honest, I totally don't recommend anyone to do it, but I did it. So I tell you guys how I did it and why I did it. And I'm going to show you guys the data on training pigs. shingles and I was in bed for six weeks till two months before my A race of the season I am in Frankfurt. After these six weeks my fitness was pretty much gone because I was sick and also in bed. Anyway have a look at the data here. This is training peaks which I use for coaching other athletes and sorting out my own training. This is chart for performance management Look at this. It's between the 20th of June till the end of August. Peak here is I am at Frankfurt and this is 70.3 Duisburg. Let's have a look at the beginning. Yes. Oh, look at that. The form one. So pretty much none. Fitness 13. <laughs> Uh, fatigue 83 because I'm fatigued from these sessions on the 20th of June, my first training sessions. My fitness goes up to 118, then tapering to do I am in Frankfurt, then it goes down again to 70.3 Duisburg. For people who don't know training pigs, these CTL, TSB, TSS, what are they? These are theoretical numbers to show how much workload we've got or where our fitness level is. These are definitely not absolute numbers, but they guide us to decide what kind of training load we should be doing. Usually I use 80-20 training principle, 80% sort of easy stuff and 20% high intensity stuff. But in this case, because I was so sick, I decided to stick to mainly endurance stuff. After all, triathlon is an endurance sport, so our ability to use utilize fat is very, very important. Of course, it's great to have faster speed, like uh, um, icing on cakes, but that can be achieved through only doing quite a bit of high intensity training which tend to be quite a bit of stress on our body. The problem is shingles are often caused by stress so I really didn't want to stress my body. Okay now we're going to have a look at uh, our weekly and a little bit more details during each session. These sessions on the 20th of June, they are the first sessions I did after being in bed for six weeks. Let's open this file. My first ride in ages. Right. To make it easy to explain, I'm going to show you guys just the um, output, uh, the wattage and the heart rate. So. This is what I did, nice and easy, uh, look at the, the power average, 152 and heart rate average of 137. I tend to have lower heart rate um, in cycling than in running, so this is very light intensity. Even for the max I had 362 watts and heart rate the highest of 161. So I took it easy. Now we're going to have a look at running session straight after that. I did that like a, a small break session. I ran only 5k. This is what I did. My pace was about five and a half minutes per kilometer. So nice and easy. My average heart rate was 158, which is slightly higher than the cycling. Having said that though, 158 was a little bit higher than where I should have been. The following week I did about six hours of training. Um, the training stress score was 275. I got back into it nice and slowly. I didn't stress myself too much. Plenty of rest. 
plenty of flexibility stuff as well and good eating good food you can probably go to my instagram and have a look at the food i was eating and a week after that i increased the volume a little bit more up to about 12 hours and the training stress score was 481 the key session this week was riding 200 kilometers why there are some reasons uh, one because a friend of mine he really wanted to do a 200k ride like first time in his life and he needed someone to come with but for me i just wanted to have that in my bag because for something like i am on triathlon you have to be moving for over minimum for eight hours that's for the pros really fast ones and for us like 10 hours and our body functions slightly differently after six seven hours so i really wanted to see how my body was coping to have confidence too. Just to show you guys how easy I was doing, look at this. This is a heart rate and uh, uh, output data. The power average was 142 and my heart rate average was 129. So even, even the max heart rate was 162. So you can tell it was really, really easy easy ride over 200 kilometers it took us seven hours 45 minutes we had some food halfway through though a week after that i had six hours of exercise and uh, training stress score was 405 that week was uh, a race week it was like a team time trial first riding 40k then four times 400 meters then 10k run straight after that there's a bit of rest between the, the team time trial and the swim but for me uh, because i started as a fourth starter for the swim i ran 10k straight after that interesting thing is before the race the biggest worry was can i really keep up with other guys in the team surprise surprise i could keep up with them in fact i was the second strongest in the team during the bike they chose me as the fourth swimmer because fourth swimmer had to swim then directly afterwards had to do the 10k run and usually i run really really well in fact in these team events i usually run ahead of them and pick up extra water and stuff at the aid stations then give the water or whatever to them and often I push the back of someone who's dropping off the, the group. This time though it went all wrong. I couldn't keep up with them during the run. If you have a look at the session on Tuesday the 6th it's in orange. It was five times one kai but I did seven times. At the race, I wanted to see how my body would react to different kinds of training by using two different disciplines. It was quite clear afterwards I decided to focus on long slow stuff because there was just huge difference. It made me realize that that 200k ride really really worked well for me. So in the following week, I trained for 13 hours my total training stress score was 744. To show you guys the difference, I go over the running distances. Well, on Tuesday, I did 15K, then on Friday, I did 20, then on Sunday, I did 15. So yeah, there, there's a quite a bit of build up. The great thing is on Sunday, after the run, I flew to Mallorca as a, a week holiday camp, training camp. I have a full-time job so I can't really train a lot and recover but I just wanted to focus on it for a week and conquer my weakness. So this is a Mallorca training week. I did 17 hours. In the original plan I was gonna do 20 but I ended up doing 17 hours. The stress score of the week was 790. When I was in Mallorca, I focused on several things. Uh, the first one was um, swim endurance. Just continuously swimming without doing flip turns. Just, just swim the distance with head up and 
just continuous movements. So during this week, I did three times 4,000 and two times about 2,000. The second thing I wanted to do was a heat training because back in 2019, when I did Ironman Frankfurt, it was scorching hot, 38 degrees in the shadow and like 42 in, under the sun. Usually when someone trains in Mallorca, they tend to go for uphill, like long climb, but I opted for more of undulation. Why? Because in Frankfurt, it's more of undulation. I did a bit of that and have a look at this on the 24th, I did a 35K run. That was more like 200K bike ride. I just wanted to cover the distance to regain the confidence. A week after that was Berlin Triathlon. My original plan was to break two hours there, but honestly, without high intensity training, that didn't happen. I ended up doing two hours and six minutes, which is not bad, but wasn't good enough to break two hours. Following weeks, these were tapering weeks. I brought the training volume down to six and a half hours and a training stress score of 439. During the race week, I brought down the volume further. And here comes I am on Frankfurt. So let's have a look at some data. The swim was 107 minutes. Oh, by the way, at Berlin Triathlon, it took me 29 minutes to swim 1,500 meters. Yes, Berlin Triathlon was with a wetsuit and Frankfurt was with a wetsuit, so that would make a difference. But 29 minutes, that's very slow for me. So between Berlin Triathlon and Ironman Frankfurt, I just focus on the technique. Because when you're doing tapering, you can't really do more training. So logically, it was good to focus on the technique. I just, I just changed the catch. Pretty much that's all what I changed. In Frankfurt, there's an Australian exit during the swim and I checked my watch and that was faster than what I did at Berlin Triathlon. So that was a surprise, but it worked. Okay, now have a, we are gonna have a look at the bike data. Official length of the bike course is 184 or five. Depends on what you look at. It took me five hours and 35 minutes. There are some places I didn't get the proper data that's because I just accidentally switched off because I didn't know how to lock the screen on Karoo 2. Silly me. Anyway the power average was 165 and the heart rate average was 138. That's pretty good. Considering where I started I just try to keep my output as low as possible just stayed in my air position as much as possible except for going over cobblestones or climbing up. I try to stay with the grip of course keeping the, the 10 meter uh, space in between but just try to minimize the energy expenditure. While I was on a bike I consumed about 110-120 grams of carbs per hour which worked quite well during the run and also after the race. We will come back to that and now we're going to have a look at the run data. There are some slow bits but that's where I picked up the, the nutrition at 8 stations. I chose Martin J. I basically had one at every eight station. My time at three hours 35 minutes, the average heart rate was one at 40 and a max of one at 58. It was my first Ironman marathon, I didn't walk. <laughs> what again? What? Are you bored? Are you bored of me? In the end, I finished Ironman Frankfurt in 10 hours 29 minutes. I think I did very okay. I talked about my carb intake during the bike and also during the run because two weeks after Ironman Frankfurt I had to do half Ironman 70.3 Duisburg and I just couldn't afford so much fatigue from full distance triathlon. In the past it took me about a month to recover. Might as well, I might keep on talking up to 70.3 Duisburg. How did I recover? I just ate well during the race and after the race and every day slept well and I did 
also quite a bit of stretching. During the following week, I did about four hours of training and during the race week, I did only two sessions. I did 5K run and I swam only 2,000 meters. The result, I did four hours, 42 minutes in the rain. So it wasn't too bad. I was seventh in my age group as well. What's now? The performance I had at these races are not optimal. So I'm gonna keep on working on that. The biggest thing at the moment is my abs. My abs are just too tight and it's affecting breathing during the run, especially during the run. Also during the bike too. The position I have now is okay, but being able to stretch the uh, muscles here, I can get a better position, I can relax more and I can stabilize my body way better and I breathe better. Slightly related to that is my right shoulder that's from the accident nine years ago. I still have trouble. Just... Oh, did you... I'm, I'm not sure if you can hear that but it still makes noise like... I have to increase flexibility because flexibility um, during the swim is massive. As I said, bringing 29 minutes for 1500 meters to 107 Ironman swim by just changing that. If you're new to triathlon, I strongly recommend you to swim in a, a team with a coach or get, get a personal swimming coach. Just, just have a few sessions. That's gonna help you a lot. I have half Ironman 70.3 in Greece at the end of October. That's gonna be my next race. And I keep on posting these videos. So if you haven't, please do subscribe and hit the bell. So you get notification every time I post a new one. And please do like the video. Otherwise, see you in the next video.